Okay, so because we have holes that are related to each other, we're going to create a sketch to create the holes from. And this is pretty cool. So I'm going to select on the front face or the top face of this part. And all the way to the right, I'm going to create a sketch. It automatically projects a geometry of this whole face outline, which is cool because I need to dimension to those edges. But there's something, you know, I can't really see this right side line and everything. There's something I want to teach you guys, and we're going to use this in a second again. Down on the bottom, I'm highlighting it. It says slice graphics. That's F7. And this is essentially slicing everything out of the way down to my sketching plane. This is only, it goes away when you get out of the sketch. This doesn't stay like a, a section view in the park. It's just to help you in the sketch. So if I hit F7 or click on that button, this is the um, kind of the look that we get when area is cut away for us. It makes it easier to see. So now I can see that green line on the right. Couldn't see it before. In order to make holes from a sketch, we're not going to draw circles. Although it will pick up the center point of a, of a circle, you're wasting time. Let's put in some points. I'm going to exaggerate these points and not make them in line. I've got three holes that are going to be dimensioned to each other on here, although they're not the same size. So I'm going to use constraints right now. And I'm going to dimension this hole right here to be, sorry, 0.875. Now, when I have a continuation line or a center line that stretch from one line to one circle to another in one direction, then that means that we're saying that they're in alignment in that direction. So that means that I want to line these two things up to both be 0.875. So if I were going to align these, if I drew a line vertically, and they were connected to it. And that line were vertical. They would be in alignment in both the same distance from that left-hand edge. So I'm going to use a constraint right now. And I'm going to align them vertically. And when you select points, it aligns things. It does not make the line vertical. So I'm going to use a vertical constraint here. And if this line comes out horizontal, when I click the vertical, I'm just going to... Uh, turn my uh, orientation of my sketch so that it looks correct for me. Or I might have to go to the horizontal. So I'm going to select this point and this point. Did you see that jump over there? Now if I turn F8 on right now, those are vertically aligned. If I try and I'm going to move this, I'm going to exaggerate this to one inch. They both move together. So that is creating a relationship between those two holes. Now I'm going to put some dimensions in. I've got a dimension from here to here. That is one inch. I've got a dimension from here to this bottom edge. That is one inch. And these, no matter where you drag these dimensions, it seems that they pop wherever they want. So I'm trying to hit the escape button and drag that out. Now, these have turned purple. They're fully defined. It says two dimensions are needed in the lower right-hand corner. This last point is not dimensioned. So let's put a dimension vertically, 1.5. And we would say, hey, that's right in the middle of the part. Why don't we put a constraint? And so we could align that point horizontally to the midpoint of our line, of a midpoint of our part. But what if that changes? If there is a 1.5 dimension, I don't want to use a constraint like that. I want to put in the dimension. Now I have a dimension 1.75 between those holes. So I'll put that in right there. 1.75. All right. Now it says they're fully constrained. Every one of these, I turn on my degrees of freedom. Nothing's showing up. I can turn off with F9, turn off my constraints. Doesn't matter because when you get out of the sketch, it's going to come out. 
Now, if I just turn this just a little bit, you can see that it cut the part away, but I'm in my sketch. So when I get out of the sketch, the rest of the part will appear. I'm going to, before I get out of this sketch, I'm going to type H for hole. Okay, so my whole feature comes up. It's still cut away because I'm, I'm really still in my sketch. If I, if I just hit finish sketch and don't say okay on the hole, it, it will get out of the whole command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two, and the diameter of those is 0 0.75. So I'm going to put this in at 0 0.75, and all three of them with that size. So I'm going to teach you guys something now that's really, really important. When you have want to gather, or select together or to deselect, you're going to hold down control to deselect a point. Now only these two points are 0.75. Now if I hit plus right now, it's going to use this same sketch. So it says apply and create a new hole, and we're in the same sketch. So it's going to pick up the last point, and I can put in a different size hole. That's called sharing a sketch between multiple sizes of features. So in this way, I'm just going to hit a plus. Now I can make this one that was not selected in the other hole feature. You see that one came up 0.75. Now I'm creating a new feature with just the last one. Since it was deselected, it wasn't selected to be used for the holes before, it knew to pick up that next one. Now, if there were four there and I needed to deselect, hold down control and select. So if I hold down control and I select this point, it goes away. If I select the point again, it comes right back. All right, so control deselects things, it gathers. If you can hold down control and gather multiple things, it can also subtract multiple things from the grouping. So this whole size is 0 0.375. And we've got that one done. I'm finished with my holes, so I don't have to hit a plus again. I say OK. Now I want to show you something right here. You see this sketch? It's underneath holes 3 and 4 and it popped it right out here. It's because it is shared. This is a shared sketch. It's, sketch. it's shared between multiple features. So it leaves it in the main, it turns it off, but it leaves it in the main menu, main browser, to show you that it's used on more than one feature. If you have a sketch out here that's in the main browser and it's still visible, that probably tells you that it was not used and you need to delete it. If I right click and I say delete this, it won't let me delete it because it's these holes are dependent on it. If you can delete a sketch out here and it doesn't give you any problems, that was an extra sketch. You need to get rid of it. But this one is a shared sketch, has the same name as this sketch. It's used here and here. So we'll be using, we'll be sharing sketches uh, more in the future. But right now, I'm going to get, we're at 5 o'clock, and I'm just going to go right on into this. If you guys need to leave, that's fine, but I'm going to make this last cut, and then I'm going to apply material and save it, and we'll be done with the axle base. Your homework is to finish the tool slide 1433 and the axle base, and I'm going to give you two more videos, so the next two parts, to watch for next time when we come in on Thursday. We're going to knock those two parts out, too. OK, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I've got I'm going to make a cut. So these these features right here are exactly the same, except there's a cut right in the middle of it. So if I wanted to make that cut, I could make it. I want to make it through wall. All right. I don't care how tall that gets. I want to make it through all. If I made this from this back surface, it would go through this. If I made this from, uh, I could make it from this surface to go through all, that'd be fine. If I made it from this surface up through all, that'd be fine too. And I'm going to select this top surface, and I'm going to make a sketch. Now, I'm immediately going to go to our button, our friend, Slice Graphics, F7. 
Let's cut away all this stuff. Now, immediately, I'm going to project some geometry because I want to draw a rectangle that's going to snap to this and snap to this. Project geometry of this outside edge. I'm also going to dimension from this side and this side. And I project that geometry so that it's easy for me to grab it later on. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. I don't care what size it is, it's snapping to the left and the right. And I'm going to dimension to the top, 0.875 from one side. Don't have to do the math of the width of this cut. It's 0.875 from each end, no matter how wide this part gets. Now I look down in the lower right hand corner, it says completely constrained. I'm going to go to my isometric view here and I'm going to say extrude. E is the alias for extrude. Now I've got several rectangles here, right? So I'm going to select inside the rectangle to grab this boundary or if I grab the, the line here, I've actually drawn that as a rectangle. So either one works. And look where I, what it's doing right here. It wants to join. That's not what I want. I want it to be a cut. Do you see this right here? And if it's a cut, because it thinks that this has gone away, it thinks it needs to flip down here. And this is just because we're inside the part, right? And we're, we've got slice graphics. What if I turn slice graphics off? And I say extrude. I'm going to select it again and select it right through the material. And for some reason, it thinks it still wants to be to join more material. And I am going to put it, make it go through all. And it just goes up to the next shape. So I'm going to make it a cut. It thinks it needs to flip. So just flip it back. I want it to go through all no matter how tall this grows. I want it to always make two separate ears and go through this. And it's already following the geometry from projected geometry here. So I'm going to make that a cut right here through all. Just flip it whatever direction you need to. And notice the distance is referenced here for us. And that is exactly the distance right here. But it's going to go through all. Now I could say up to next or up to a surface, which would not give me a dimension. Neither will through all. And then up to next. We're going to be using these in the future because there's there are features up here that we could go up to. So I'm going to say OK on that one. And we've got our part created. 0 0.875, 0 0.875 is done. My diameter is in. That 0.875 is in. OK, so now I'm going to change my material. This is a 6061 aluminum. When we come into class on Thursday, we're going to look at the material spreadsheet, which I have in Blackboard for you. And we're going to talk about threads before we even start the parts. OK, so that'll be part of our lecture. 6061 aluminum. That is a very common aluminum. It's good for welding. It's good to cast. And it's real easy to machine. It's strong. Um, it's conductive. It's a good alloy of aluminum. Now, if I hit this down key up here, don't go to the moon, go to the right where it says generic, because all parts just start out generic. If I hit A for aluminum, there are lots of kinds of aluminum. I'm going to go to a 6061, just plain 6061. And now I'm going to give it a different appearance by hitting the down key. And it has kept the Autodesk appearance library. Now, you may have to... You may have to ask for this every time you open Inventor. This is not a default. You may have to set it to the Autodesk thing. But once you're in there and you're working, it stays there. So I'm going to make mine anodized blue. You know, you can anodize aluminum, like all the cool parts in the auto parts store. And I'm going to save my part. And this is the actual base. And I'll be sending you these videos, hopefully named and uh, in a playlist from YouTube, but it takes a while for that to upload. So watch for that. You can always go to your Google Calendar and look for the date timestamps um, for the order of progression. And then I'm going to send you homework to watch the videos, um, get these two modeled, 
And you can go ahead and model those and export. See if you can do it with the videos. Um, that's fine. If you guys model ahead, it does not bother me whatsoever. But I'm going to try and show you some tips and tricks as we go and why we do things a certain way. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and hanging over time.